So let's get started in InDesign. This first lecture um, that's jumping into InDesign here, um, or the creation of your own artwork in InDesign, we'll talk about, or it'll, it'll cover what's covered in chapters one and two in your textbook. And I highly recommend the textbook. I know it's recommended at this point in time because they haven't come out with a new version, but everything we do in the Art 1200 class hasn't really changed since like CS4. All the stuff that's changing are the new features and the new digital stuff. And Art 1200 is still kind of print-based. If you take the advanced InDesign classes, there's two of them. Art 2200 is advanced in design for digital out, um, sorry, for printed outputs, and so you'll make a book or something in there. And then Art 2120 eDesign and Publishing is an advanced in design class that covers the digital side of InDesign. And so if you find yourself kind of liking the foundation of InDesign, but you're not getting enough of that digital stuff that you want, consider taking Art 2120 eDesign and Publishing. Okay. So our objectives for this, this uh, second half of this lecture are to understand how to create a new project in InDesign. I'll talk about what to expect and what the settings mean in the new document dialog box because there's a couple settings that are probably foreign to most of you that are standard in printing, and so we'll talk about those. We'll talk about the idea of setting and modifying workspacing. We'll talk about docking and nesting panels. This is all kind of intro stuff to make you feel comfortable with the workspace. The expectation for the project for this module is not to be a master of InDesign yet. It's just to experiment and explore. I'll show you how to set your measurements to inches because InDesign will default to points and picas, and that can be kind of frustrating to people who are comfortable with inches. We'll talk about the idea of menus, tools, panels, and the application bar specifically because if I say the application bar or I say the control bar, I want you to know what I'm talking about so that you're not wasting time trying to figure out what I'm trying to point you in the direction of instead of actually looking at it. We'll talk about adding pages even though most of our documents for this class will be one page until we get towards the end of the semester. We'll talk about selecting color. There are three ways I'm going to show you and I'm going to kind of push you in the direction of one of them being the best option. I'll show you how to insert and modify type because that is a requirement of your next project. Um, you can do that um, by experimenting with the character and paragraph panels which we're not going to specifically cover today, but I'll show you how to get to them. You can kind of play around with them. And then I'm going to show you how to organize and divide your workspace using guides. Those are non-printing elements that help you kind of structure your workspace. And you'll need to do that for your project because you need, for your project, you're going to divide the workspace into nine cells. And in each cell, you're going to practice creating shapes and text and using fill colors and stroke colors, which is interior colors and exterior like border colors, um, to create a a poster that tells the class about yourself. It's the introduce me, introduce yourself to the class project. So getting started, when you are ready to use InDesign, you first have to open it. And so on a Mac, so all of my demos are Mac based, but you can kind of translate them to PCs if you're taking this at home and you're using a PC. On a PC, there are so many ways to open an application. So on a Mac, they're called applications, but on a PC, they call them programs. Um, to open an application and so just find the way that works for you. I like the little blue finder guy and so that's my first option on your dock whether it's horizontal at the bottom of your screen or it's up on the side or it's hidden and you have to kind of hover over the bottom of your of your your uh, computer screen to get it. Um, on the left hand side or on the bottom or the top, I can't remember if on the vertical one, there should be a little blue guy that's kind of like half dark blue and half light blue face. That's called the finder. And if you click on him, he will open a, a window that will allow you to kind of search through the computer. You can also, if you have an HD uh, Macintosh hard drive on your desktop, you can double click that and either of these open the same window. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, you can also use this guy right here. It's a little magnifying glass. And if I hover over the top here, you can see that um, the top of my screen has kind of come down. In the bottom right-hand corner, there's something called the spotlight. And if you click on that, it'll allow you to search the computer, and you can type InDesign. And then it will show you anything that has the word InDesign on the computer, and you could open InDesign from there. And then, whoops, last but not least, um, if your doc already has the program on it, and if you're taking this class on campus at Salt Lake Community College, um, it will be on the dock. You can just click on it and it will open. Anything that has a little light or a little circle in the newer versions of Macs, underneath the application means it's open. If you right click, you can close them. And so whenever you shut down the computer or you're done for the day and you're going to log out, you need to get rid of all these little lights. You can see how many lights I have in my little example. The only light you can't get rid of is the one under the finder and it will always be there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back and forth from my lecture, um, from the slideshow to the computer. 
And so you'll just have to bear with me on that. And so I have my computer open and I want to launch InDesign. And right now I can see it's on my dock. And so I could click it to launch it. You can see I already have a document open. I'm going to close it so I can show you. And we can quit out of InDesign. If InDesign is not on the dock, so I'm going to undock it by just removing it, clicking and dragging it, um, you can click the little blue finder guy and it will open um, a little dialog and then you can hit applications and you can scroll through until you find InDesign and you can open it that way. When you open it, even if it's not part of your default dock, it'll appear. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out as well. Um, you can also, if you have a little HD uh, on your desktop, you can open it and then you can choose applications or this is the same window so I could choose applications over here again and find InDesign and open it. And then one way that students usually like is a spotlight and so if you were to click on it it will launch and you can search your computer for InDesign and then you can find InDesign you can double click and open it. What I really like about the spotlight is I make students or I require students in my classes to label their files with their last name so if you lose your file and you don't know where it's saved but you know you saved it you can just type your last name in this little dialog and it will go through the computer and it will find anything that has um, your name attached to it so whatever current one PDF is that I can find and I could open it if I wanted to and if you scroll through it shows you that I exported PNGs for the first project for this class and, and it's attached there and eventually you would find things that were for like my other classes because I put my last name on everything Okay, once you have InDesign open, you're going to get a little dialog that shows you things that you used to have open. And if they're still on your computer, you could double click them and you can open them. And so you can see these black and white ones. You probably can't see what they are. But those are printing plates for my printing class. And this is a schedule that I made for my online Photoshop class. And this is a document I had open when I was doing a demo for my InDesign class. What you're going to do for our class, though, is you're usually just going to choose New and you will get the new document dialog box. Let me zoom in here. There are many settings on this new document dialog box and it's important to know what they are and if you ever see a little arrow that is pointing to the side and you can click on it and it will point down, it will expand and open and give you more options. And so as my rule, if you ever see that, hit it just to see what it is. But I'm going to jump back to my slideshow and talk about this dialog box before we make decisions about what our document should be. So if we go back to our slideshow here, the new document dialog box has lots of settings and this slide has lots of words. Um, that's because it is for your reference, not for me to kind of read. I'm just going to go down the list and explain. Document presets are preset settings that you might use over and over again that you would save. Maybe you do a quarterly newsletter for your work and it's always 12 pages, it's always 7 inches by 9, it always has certain margins and certain bleeds, etc. You don't have to remember those settings or even reset those settings. Every time you create it, you can save a preset. We don't talk about saving presets in InDesign, but we will cover that in the Advanced InDesign Art 2200 if you ever take that class. The intent is what do you intend to do with this project? And so for our class, we are always going to choose print as our intent, um, but you could choose web or you could choose mobile. And if you click through those options on that drop down, notice what happens to your panel things change and they try to push you in the right direction for making good decisions about web and mobile documents. The number of pages I think is self-explanatory. So how many pages do you want your document to be? Facing pages determines if you have a book or you don't have a book. Books have facing pages. If you open the book, you have a spread. You have page two next to page three and that's a spread when you open the book up. And if you want your document to read as a book, so page one is on the right, page 2 is on the left, page 3 is on the right, page 4 is on the left, page 5 is on the right, etc. You need to turn facing pages on. If you turn facing pages off, you get what I call the Microsoft Word column. So if you were to create a document in Microsoft Word that had 400 pages, you'd have one big column of pages. And so that's what you would get if you turn facing pages off. And there's time and place for both. If you're only making a document that has one page, it really doesn't matter what you choose because it will look the same to you. But once you have more than one page in your uh, project, that's when you need to decide, is this a book or is it not a book? You can also start the page on pages that are not page one. I would say that's also something that's more complex than we're going to get into right now, but maybe you're responsible for designing pages 37 to 60 of a book, and so you want to start the page numbering on page 37, and so you could design it that way. 
We're not going to touch that. We'll always start on page one in this class. The page size is a drop down that has generic page sizes that you may use. They're standard page sizes. You can either choose a page size from the drop down or you can enter a custom page size. Maybe you're making a label and the label has to be two and three quarters by six and a third. Um, then you can enter that uh, measurement there. On the right hand side is your orientation option. Do you want a portrait orientation where your project is taller and skinnier? Or do you want a landscape orientation, which would be the second option, where it's shorter and wider? Um, that depends on your design. Columns do not actually add columns to your document. They add guides that help you create columns or separate your workspace into columns. Um, so if you're trying to create a newsletter that has to have three columns, you could increase the number of columns to three, and then it would give you guides to where the text should go in those columns. Uh, they're non-printing, so you won't see the columns unless you design within those parameters. The gutter is a space between the columns. Margins are interesting. So margins are the space between the edge of your page and where your text would stop on your page. And you're basically saying that you want to have a buffer around the edge of your page. And so if you're writing a paper for your English class, you might have a one inch margin on all sides because that's standard for an English paper. And so what you're saying is that you don't want any text between the margin and the edge of the page. And so for our projects, you might have to have a minimum margin of a half inch or a quarter inch or, or an eighth of an inch. But no matter how big or small you design those margins, what you were saying to me is that you don't want any text outside the margin between the margin and the edge of your page. So keep that in mind. It's a requirement for every project. If you look at every scoring rubric that you'll have in this class, there's a typo that should say ART 1200. Um, if you look at the scoring rubric for every project in this class, it'll say, proper use of margins and bleeds and proper use of margin means if you set the margin to an inch that you don't have any text between the edge of the page and the first inch around the, the edge of the page. Bleed and slug are on the bottom half of the new document dialog box and you won't see that unless you expand and they're really important. Bleed is, and I'm going to read it from here because I kind of took a while to type this up and it's really long-winded but I feel like it explains it really well. Bleed provides additional printed area beyond the edge of the page for trimming purposes. We print 1 8 of an inch, 0.125 inches, which is standard printing bleeds beyond the edge of the page in case we trim slightly beyond the page. Having the extra printed area allows for slight defects in trimming that would normally cause a bright white streak of unprinted paper to show through. And so in theory, in this dialog box, I'm creating a document that's 8.5 by 11. And if I was to trim it on four sides after I'm done to make it be 8.5 by 11, I would trim it exactly where it needs to be trimmed. But I'm not perfect, and sometimes I'll trim a little further outside that 8.5 by 11 than I meant to. And if I print a little extra, nobody has to know the difference. But if I didn't print extra and I cut a little bit to the left instead of where I was supposed to, I could end up with a bright white streak of paper showing through, and then it screams, Jessica did not trim that properly, and everybody would know. And we add the bleed on all sides, whether or not we have a bleed in our document as well. So a bleed occurs when something in your design touches the edge of the page. And so if you have a red background to your page and you want to print all over the background, a solid red background, you don't stop it at 8.5 by 11 for this particular example. You would extend it 1 8 of an inch on all sides. And so if you're off a little bit when you trim, it's not a big deal. Slug is an additional area outside the page area. And what happens is we add more space that we want to, we want that space to carry over if we export or if we print our document. And we put things in it like printer's marks, registration marks. You can also put printing instructions. And so in ART 1200, it will never be a requirement to add that slug because it will be done automatically when we add all printer's marks. But if you're going through our graphic design program here at Salt Lake Community College, your traditional graphic design classes like type and layout and design and advanced design, etc., they will require you to put very specific information in the slug. And so you'll have to come back to the slug and you'll have to set that based on what they're asking for. Do they want a half inch slug on all sides? Do they want a half inch slug on the bottom? And this is where you'd add that, even though we're not going to require an ART 1200 just yet.